Okay, let me get started. Um, this is a a talk. Um, this is a talk I've given over uh, over the last couple of years, and it's an evolving talk. It's basically introduction, um, but rather than you know lots and lots of slides, I just want to show lots and lots of different types of flow, uh, Microsoft flow based systems right in the in the in this world in this new world of the power platform with microsoft flow and power apps a lot of times we see a power app that's doing all the fancy work and then flow is some sort of back end that's you know not really focused on uh, my demo focuses purely on flow they are uh, full flow systems uh, for various very distinct scenarios uh, that's why i wanted to get into um, I can't really see the room, but how many people have played with Microsoft Flow? Can someone count for me? One, two, three, about half. About half. half. About yeah. half. Okay, okay. That's wonderful. <laughs> um, how many are familiar with PowerShell? Hundred percent. Yeah, nice. Sorry, what was it? Everyone. Yep. Oh, yeah, wonderful. So just, so just John. Um, can everyone hear that? Okay. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. cool. All right. Thanks. Keep going, John. Okay, good. Okay, ah. good. So uh, let me get started. So a bit about me. Uh, I have been a developer and a consultant, mainly based in Sydney, for the last 20 years. So it's been a long time. Um, I'm a MVP in SharePoint, so Office Apps and Services. Too long. It just means Office and Friends uh, SharePoint. And I'm also MVP in Flow, so I'm actually also a business application uh, MVP. Uh, so I sit in that bridge between Office and Dynamics, you know, just just because, just just trying to be more busy than I'm already am. Um, with the with Microsoft Flow, I grew kind of I kind of grew with the product, and on Twitter I got uh, nicknamed the Flow Ninja because I'm always hacking uh, Microsoft Flow. Uh, they are serious hacks. They're on Twitter. Um, there's probably a, about 105 now of crazy recipes or, you know, uh, patterns. Uh, also quite familiar with Microsoft Graph and uh, Azure Functions. So you can find me on Twitter at John N. Liu. So there's an extra N. And uh, my, my, my email address is john.liu at flowstudio.app. So... For the last 20 years, I've been a consultant, and in the last year, I have switched into a, a part-time product role where I'm building out this app that helps uh, me and helps uh, our makers build and maintain their flows. So we'll see a bit of that app as well. So the plan today is really uh, a quick intro, what is flow, and it's not mere workflows. Right. In the Office 365 world, or even from the Dynamics world, we think, oh, Flow is the new workflow engine. Actually, Microsoft Flow is a lot bigger than just a workflow engine. Uh, lots and lots of demos. For this user group explicitly, I added this section, which is Flow and PowerShell. So Adam says he gives me 15 minutes. I'm probably going to need an hour and 20. I'm just going to run really quick. I'm just going to run really quick. Um, and there's a, a few slides at the end. Uh, I suggest the learning path if you're new to Flow or if you're kind of on your way. Uh, but but um, there, there are various parts of Flow once you get into expressions or get into fancy patterns that they get quite tricky. So how do you go about learning that or finding help? Uh, that kind of, that, that's sort of idea. So what is Flow? And this is, uh, for flow is very difficult to, to describe because it is actually many products to many people. At the very basic personal productivity area, flow is Microsoft's building if this then that, right? There's this web service, if this and that, you go and pick a recipe that kind of fits what you're trying to do. And then you're plugging a few parameters, you know, the output from Twitter, put that in the email template, and then now you get an email every time someone tweets uh, the user group, which will spam uh, Adam, so that's wonderful. Um, uh, yes, which totally build that flow. Everyone should build one of those. Um, so that's on the personal productivity side. Then, of course, there is workflow, and 
Uh, Microsoft Flow is the replacement of both SharePoint workflow and dynamic workflow. Um, and to understand this, really, these products have not been deprecated. So don't go, don't take a picture of this and run off and say, Microsoft, you're going to deprecate this workflow. Their uh, flow is not yet at that stage where, where they're deprecating the old workflow engines. But if you look under the hood and you say, well, the SharePoint and Dynamics workflow engines are built on top of Windows Workflow Foundation. Windows Workflow Foundation has a dependency on .NET standard. And the .NET team has not been working on .NET standard for the last four years. They're working on .NET Core. So you first have to hear Windows Workflow being ported to .NET Core before any of this product can move. Personally, I believe that the product will never exist. So the workflow engine will not move on from where it is right now. Um, and that's also because of where Microsoft is and where the industry is going. Today, when we think of a workflow engine, it's an engine that's born in the cloud. When it needs to do lots and lots of micro tasks, it just generates, spins up a new server, run it, and then dispose of that VM, uh, or find some Azure function, run some code, and then disappear. In the old Windows workflow, we really have a product that's built explicitly for one server. So when it gets too overloaded with workflow tasks, then it starts serializing the jobs and not being able to complete them. So the, the old Windows workflow kind of paradigm or the, the, the design is unsuitable for this new kind of cloud-based world um, where, where flow and logic apps, they're kind of born in the cloud. So considering that in mind, when I say, okay, it's most likely uh, Microsoft Flow and Logic Apps will replace all the Windows workflow um, kind of engine or products in the future. Uh, it is also integration engine. So the work that Microsoft was doing with BizTalk, uh, where you have enterprise integration, or, if, or even if it's a small, medium businesses, if you say regularly receive a CSV file of 2,000 records and you just need to push them into, uh, maybe copy them to a drop location and then um, trigger SSIS to pick it up or, or run the flow that will pick it up and then insert them into SQL. So it could be used in that scenario. And finally, uh, flow is itself serverless compute. So in the same thing that we could just say, oh, you know what, I need some kind of computation to be done. And um, in Azure, we have products like Azure Functions. Uh, Azure Functions is a very code-based way to specify what you want to do. Flow is a local way, so you cannot describe what you want to do by connecting these connectors. But ultimately, if you look at what Flow is, Flow is not the Flow is really just compute in the cloud. It, you describe what you need to do, and then it wakes up and it does it. Uh, this is a quick question I like to kind of get people thinking. We often had this problem. Why does Microsoft's product X not work with product Y? And um, the answer really is that, well, this is a problem that Microsoft is solving with Microsoft Flow because uh, rather than every product needs like 20 integrations with 20 other products, no, they all just have one connected to Flow. And then Flow is able to integrate between product X and product Y. So that's kind of the, the way that rather than a one to many and, and many to many and impossible integration scenarios, we just have each product team describing the endpoints to talk to their product. And then you use the engine in the middle like Flow to link them up. So that is uh, rapidly a pattern employed almost everywhere. Okay, ooh, fancy slides and the animations off. So firstly, um, that is in the wrong place. I'm so sorry. So firstly, Flow is a global compute platform. Let me, that's going to annoy me. Sorry, I have to change this. How do I change this? It's just going to be up here. Okay. So firstly, uh, Flow in Logic App is a global cloud compute platform. So they exist in every Azure data center, including the new ones in Africa. Um, in Australia, they are available in Melbourne and Sydney. Then you have uh, up to up to last week, you have 275 connectors. Um, and then you have local 
So it's designed for local power users. You do use expressions to describe how the connectors are linked together, but they are not a high level code like a C sharp or JavaScript. Uh, this 255 connectors, uh, they increase almost every week. So by the time I finish this talk, it's probably 280 connectors. Um, that's just how how quick they are they are going. Okay. Um, so kind of rushing through that, and I want to get to the demos. Uh, I can't see everyone. Have, have I lost everyone? Is everyone okay? All good? Yeah, we're all heavily engaged in your words. Oh, good, good, wonderful. Um, this is a, a fancy thing. This I should sometimes do a power PowerPoint um, talk. You can define multiple slides and make them a, uh, it's called summary zoom, right? So you go. Ooh, and goes into that first demo, and then <laughs> and then you back out. Ooh, go in the next. So it's kind of a way for me to say, uh, you know, this is the overview, and we'll zoom into each demo. But let me show. Um, I just want to show that, but there's actually no slides underneath. I need to switch out to do the do the demo. So um, very quickly, this is Flow Studio app. Flow Studio app is an app I built to help me see all my flows. If I take off this filter, so currently I have a filter to a conference and my demos. I actually have 488 flows, and I have a lot of problem finding the right one. Uh, so sometimes I want to just see by last run. So uh, generally, if you have a dozen flows, uh, the management UI here will be fine. You could see your flows here. Uh, this is the Microsoft UI. But uh, once you go over, say, 20 or 30, it becomes hard to find where your flow is. So that's that's why I built this. And then uh, I added a whole bunch of additional functionality to it, like we can migrate flows, uh, make copies. Um, yeah, so I think of it like SQL Management Studio. You use SQL Management Studio to connect to SQL Server, and it gives you this it gives a power user uh, fancy new utilities to do various things. Anyway, Flow Studio app is a freemium, so this part is always free. A lot of the <coughs> advanced functionalities need a small subscription. Right, let me finish selling and go back to there. All right, first demo. I'm so by this wonderful. So first demo is a uh, an approval escalation demo. So this is very common in both in business, in both uh, SharePoint and in Dynamics. Um, we have, uh, this flow is a menu trigger flow, so I'm gonna just trigger by clicking this, this button. Uh, you can just trigger by using run as well. Um, and let me trigger it and then I'll talk through what it's doing. This is my first flow. So if you have not seen flow, flow looks like buttons. Uh, flow looks like boxes, and each box is doing something. So um, firstly, I want to show there is a parallel branch here, so flow can execute things in parallel. In this left-hand side, it's used the HTTP action to call this URL, and then I just send a random JSON. Let's go hello. And this uh, HTTP bin is a kind of an echo web service, so it basically returns back to me what I just sent. It. So it's returned that back to me. Okay, so that's a quick demo I want to show there. This part on the right is, oh, it's thinking, so it's, um, I'm gonna have to wait a minute, but let me describe. I have a user here called Gimli, so this is my test tenant, everyone's from Lord of the Rings. Um, so we have Gimli, and I have a Boolean that says whether something is approved or not. Now, um, so when this starts, I can't expand this right now because it's waiting in the loop. But let me show. Um, let me show. Let me show this part. I should be receiving an approval, so I'm going to approve this. I actually get a approval on my phone as well, but uh, given that you can't see my phone, I'll just approve on the web page. So I approve that. If I come back, oh, it's already wrapped up and finished. Let me show you what's going on. So within here, I started a loop. 
I'm basically saying, okay, get Jim Jim Lee's manager. There is an action called get manager. It will talk to your Azure AD and it will find out that Kim Lee reports to Gandalf, okay? And then it will start the approval with Gandalf. And then what I have done is th- we, we set up a pattern where we say, if successful, it will come here and it will, um, it will set the approved variable to true. Otherwise, we will set the user to Gandalf and then loop back and find Gandalf's manager, which happens to be me. And in my little scenario, Gandalf is stuck on the tower. He can't come to the call, so he can't approve this uh, very urgent thing. Gimli wants another lunch, and it it can't happen. Um, In that case, it gets forwarded to me, and then I approve it. I actually set the timeout to be one minute. Your business approval probably times out in seven days, three days. It's really up to you. the additional changes here, you can use the Outlook action to query if the user has an out of office set. So you can say, oh, the manager has out of office set. So they're probably not in the office. So let's escalate or let's change the user to a backup backup account that's always uh, never allowed to go to holidays. So they always have to stick around and, and approve things. Uh, and then assign the approval to them. So in Flow, uh, we don't have one mega crazy Uber approval action. We have these smaller building blocks that we kind of use to put together a complex approval. You could do uh, multi-stage, so you can do this one approval. There's another one, there's a third one. You could do parallel approval, so a job needs about two or three jobs to be completed. So um, you, you may do parallel approvals as well. So flow kind of works that way. Okay, let me uh, pop back into edit. I want to show you the um, the loop. So here uh, we have this, that's the approval with the email. And then we have these two branches. Let me pop over to the run after. So this is kind of a fun uh, pattern where we say this parallel only runs if this is successful. And this part only runs if it times out. And then this one has a setting that says uh, timeout in one minute. You can see um, every time you go to settings and go to the back, you start to see these crazy, you know, ISO uh, date pattern strings. Uh, you can almost imagine that the person who designed this is some sort of admin, IT pro, developer, not really a power user. But everything in the front, this is uh, power user friendly. But on the back, it's like, oh, okay. Hmm, that's an interesting string. So if you're, you may or may not be familiar with the um, date, date strings. So that's really that. And then there's a loop around this. Um, I like to hang around here because I do like to show this crazy action. So the generic HTTP action, it's like a call HTTP. PowerShell has a method, right? In full REST method or called call, uh, HTTP, um, but Flow has this generic action which lets you do, you know, any kind of method on HTTP, any URL, any content type. You can send through even binary inside this body. It doesn't have to be string. Uh, and then in the fun session, you could just say, oh, I want Active Directory and then specify tenant ID client secret. So that will do your auth automatically in one action. Um, and then in addition, you could do the settings. I love the settings in the back. So there's pagination. Anytime you're using HTTP to request some sort of big data set, and then it comes back and say, okay, here's the first 50 rows, and here's a next link. And in HTTP, you're supposed to take the next link and make a new request, and then fetch the next page, and then merge it together. In Flow, you just take this and say, you know what, I'm going to take up to, I don't know, 500, oh no, too, too big. There is a limit, there is a limit, not a million, uh, 100,000 rows, I'm just going to do that. And uh, pagination will just automatically be followed, if it sees pagination, it will follow it, and then it will merge the result into a big array. Uh, it automatically handles time timeouts that, that we can say. It automatically applies retry policy, so if your web server is kind of having a bad day and then, you know, it's it's uh, not responding right away. The default actually is retry four times. So you automatically would do it four times. 
Um, but you could do crazy things like, oh, I don't know, exponential <laughs> interval. Let's just do 90 times. And each time we're going to increment by 10 seconds or, or five seconds, I don't know, um, and so on. And you set this up and then you are uh, okay. And you change it to your competitor's website. And then you just have a DDoS um, web service spamming their website um, to test. To test, they are available. They are responsive. Um, no, don't do that. Don't use flow for evil. Let me go back. Let me take that off. It's winching. It's... Damn it. What's it doing? And now it won't let me delete now. Oh, damn. All right. Don't save, John. Uh, so that's the first demo. So it's kind of a HTTP parallel approval. So it kind of shows a bit of the loops, a bit of the uh, variables. Uh, quite a crazy one for a first demo. Hope everything's. Hope everyone's okay. Um, I can't see the room. I'm gonna assume that you're over excited, and we're just gonna march on to the next one. Ooh. And the next one. Ooh, yeah. Next one is this crazy one. I only have crazy demos. I. There's 480 not so crazy ones. I just show you guys the cool ones. Um, this one is. Oh, um, John, John. Yes. Stop me for a sec. Just checking if yeah. there's any questions so far. Is there oh. anything you want to interrupt about the last demo? Just a quick one. Last one with that uh, HTTP post. The yep. JSON for that. You make that dynamic rather than static that that was there. So you build up yes. the JSON based on other inputs. Yeah, you could build dynamic JSON. No problem. Uh, there are two ways to do it. Let me let me quickly show what that might look like. So um, you could just get rid of that, John, and then use the variable. So the variable that's on the top. So you could do that. Or you could use an action called compose. And compose is kind of like an evaluate. It's a very generic thing. You could just say hello, and that's going to be a string. Or if you say, you know, JSON, then that becomes a JSON object. And then you could put the output of the compose inside here. So if you want to create kind of an output <coughs> and make multiple HTTP, you may use a compose to build that first. And then here you just say use that value. Uh, or you could build it in line. Yeah, is that, is that, that's, yeah. Thank you. Hope that answered the question. Yep. All right, let's run That's to the good. next one. Any other, so, another question oh. on that one? Oh, sorry, one more question, John. Yeah, oh, okay. Um, given, your, uh, given your ability to call uh, deposts, uh, can you call a REST API uh, thinking of decision management uh, execution these days where we can move the decision out of this environment and put it into a decision management tool and then return the results back and action that within a flow? So it depends on the decision make, uh, management too. But if your API is some sort of webhook, you can actually use the variant of this. Let me show you. Um, such, you guys have great questions. I can't see you, but you have great questions. That is a great question. That is a great question. That, that one's a bad question, that one. Um, so the, the uh, I wasn't even going to add this. That's why this is a cool question. Um, you can call a web service and you say, hey, I'm going to call, um, you know, your extra, uh, your, your web service. And then I'm going to actually tell you a thing called a uh, list callback. Uh, is it going to work today? Why is my expression not working? That's, that's kind of annoying. <laughs> Hold on. Is it, is it here? If I can't see it here, list. Go back. There we go. Let's go back URL. I'm just going to use that. So what that does is it will call your external system with a URL. Okay. And then the whole flow goes to sleep and it waits for this. So imagine this block just goes to sleep. And your external system, it takes 15 days and it gets a response. Then it calls that URL with a JSON or a string. It wakes up this action and the flow collapses. You understand? You get it? Yep. So it's like a asynchronous pattern where you just say, 
oh, oh, here's the rest on bother. You take it and then you go. And the whole flow goes to sleep. And you don't, you're not paying for any kind of, oh, let's do an Azure function that wake up every five minutes to check if we got a message or anything. No, you just, your flow just goes to sleep. It doesn't, it doesn't wake up or think. It just waits for someone to call that URL. Okay, so that's the asynchronous webhook pattern. Very advanced, uh, extremely cool. But you can use it for both external systems or you can use it in some sort of Teams. Uh, this could be a Teams bot, right? You could say, let's send a message to Teams. Teams, send, um, post your message as a card to a user, right? So uh, you say, okay, email Gimli. That's Gimli. Um, and uh, and this action is actually, oh wait, not this one. Sorry, there might be another one. I might miss it. But there is a there is a let me let me quickly get show you the right one. Otherwise, I'm gonna I'm gonna get all these questions that say ah uh, here we got list of choices. So you can say uh send to Gimli recipient Gimli which is the user um. Uh, uh, tell me lunch, and then, oops, lunch, and then you say, you know, burger, uh, um, I don't know, you only got one choice, but um, this action will send a mm -hmm. message card to Gimli, he will get it in his team chat, and he will have buttons, right, in this case, it just had burger, but you can add more, like salad, salad, let's do salad. Uh, I'm typing too fast. Um, and then this action goes to sleep. Well, it waits for the user to pick a choice, and then it comes back and wake up, and then you can take the output and continue. Okay, so uh, I don't know. Uh, you may have a scenario. You need to ask your user to say, I need you to make a decision right now. Uh, Flow can be used to build that. So Flow has all these crazy low-level blocks. Uh, they're actually really complex objects. Like they're calling an endpoint, and they're doing a asynchronous wait, uh, but it's all kind of packaged into this uh, power user friendly kind of UI. But if you really think about what it's doing, it's like it's doing these crazy uh, serverless kind of event hooks all, all around the back end. Uh, quite interesting. Really like this product. Uh, probably some some places quite rough for for a power user, but I find it very interesting. That the whole product is really cool. All right, let me come back to here. Uh, this one, I need to, I forgot to do a setup. I need to quickly pop over to my Outlook. So what this one does is when I trigger the flow, I'm going to read today's calendar. And then uh, I'm fascinated that sometimes in flow, often in flow, we take an existing document and we do something with it and then we send it to someone. This example is kind of using flow to just generate things out of nothing. And what I'm doing is I'm taking a calendar and then I'm pulling out the calendar date and the subject and I'm creating an iCal. So ICS is a calendar attachment file. I'm just going to make this text using the compose action. So this is not JSON, this is just raw text. And then I will send an email to me and also to Gmail. And then uh, I actually use the output as the attachment content. So I don't stick it in the body. I actually say I want this text as the actual attachment. It's going to be named event ICS. Now to run this, I do need a I do need a calendar for today, and I usually oh I have one today. I have two. I'm not sure which one to pick up, but anyway, we're just going to go. It might it might just break because I I got two. I've never had two calendars anyway. Let me just do it. Um. Hopefully it picked the second one, but it may pick the first one. So um, it's already told me that it's got an IQ, so it sends it to me very quickly. Um, see, so flow runs before I can out tap. That's how quick flow runs. Here we go. Here's the IQ. Um, and I have all these things. Let's dismiss it. Uh, no, it's it's picked up the first appointment, which is Debbie. I, I was talking to Debbie Ireland, and I, I made an appointment to message her. But uh, it's created this. It's it's got the the sender. Uh, the room is just room two. I just made it up. 
uh, but it took the subject and it took the date. So, you know, if you have an internal calendar and you're hosting an event and you want the, everyone external to accept a calendar file, uh, this is something that you can build and you could run this every morning. So rather than you manually triggering, you just say every morning run this, fetch the team event calendar, generate ICS file, and then send it to everybody. And if there's no file, then just skip and stop. And that's a very simple one. So it's kind of generating, generating nothing, generating something out of nothing, right? Kind of that's the that's the scenario. And then to jump a uh, jump on top of that one, there's another example here. This is a demo that we can because earlier I said flow can work with binary, right? So um, I could say. Okay, use SharePoint to fetch a file. In fact, this is a JPEG image. I'm gonna then, uh, what am I going to do? I'm gonna use an expression, it's called Damn. The expression is fighting me today. I'm gonna hold for over it. Um, there is a function called data URI and we take the output of this binary. What it does is it turns the uh, the binary, you know, bytes array into a big data URI, base 64 encode, the big string. Um, not particularly human readable, but the nice part of a data URI is uh, you can create a simple HTML. I, I don't know whether you guys can read this. Let me make it bigger. So you can create a simple HTML, HTML, hello. Um, you're using the concat, so concatenate things together. Um, image source, and then this is the actual base64 string. So this is like, I don't know, several thousand characters of base64. And then uh, just for the, just for, just for fun, we'll do it again. So we actually use the same image twice. Hello, and then hello again. So I use that to create a HTML file in my OneDrive. And then in OneDrive, we have an action to say, well, convert a HTML file into a PDF. Okay, so we're actually generating PDF. Uh, and then if I scroll back up a little bit. So this trigger is a fun one. This trigger is a HTTP request trigger. So let me copy this and let me double check this. So that's the default. Default method is post. So I will run this with Postman. So Postman <coughs> is the tool to test, to test our web, web web services. I should launch it while I'm talking because it's going to spin around. While it's spinning, I'll talk about <coughs> there's one more bit at the end. So uh, let me just that, 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 change that to a post, pop that URL in there. And it wants to update or ignore that. Uh, I'm going to send the request. And then here you will see it's running and it should finish quite quickly. And then it sends the output. So I actually take the binary from this PDF and I send it straight out. So you can see flow is processing um, the, the HTTP request. That's the binary in here. And then I send the binary right out. This is all encoded binary, not, not safe for humans, but very safe for computers. Uh, and then if we come back here, it says, oh, it's finished. And it says, no, I don't know how to read a PDF, but you could download it and have a look. So I'm going to click that. Uh, just put it on the desktop, I think. And then where is response? Here we go. So desktop response, and we will see this is our PDF that we generated. Yay, embed all the things. Um, one pattern that's quite nice here is imagine you have to do a business report and it's coming out of say a SharePoint list or SQL list and you have a bunch of lists and you want your company logo up on the top right and do a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, kind of make it look kind of officially. Or maybe you want to use Flow as some sort of invoice generation system. <coughs> um, so you have invoice lines and you do, do on your company logo this time and that kind of scenario. So a lot of these are very simple to do. The, the HTML to PDF is not particularly complex, so don't go insane with uh, CSS styles and multi-page and, you know, it's not going to work that wonderfully. 
but if you stick to simple table layouts uh, and generally just test this, it, it will work very well. Okay, so that's another example. I'm just gonna run ahead. Uh, let me do, let me do, let me do that one. You got 15 about, minutes left, Max. I have 15 minutes, Max. Oh God. I'm giving you another five, 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm already skipping demos. I'm sorry. Got to do this one. This one is, um, this one, uh, very quickly, I'm, I'm not going to dive in. I'm just going to say this one creates, this one calls, um, calls REST to create Office 365 group. And then it turns that group into a team. And then I read the team because teams have channels. So I read the team looking for a general channel. And then uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to finally send a message to that channel. Okay, so we're going to we're gonna do this. And what, what are we going to call it? We're going to call it something we haven't used before. Um, Adelaide. I have never presented in the Adelaide used to do this. Adelaide, I do. Shut down on us. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's impressive. <laughs> So um, that's going to run very quickly. These first few are quite quick. It will actually stop here. Let me explain. Um, when we create Office 365 groups, in the back end, uh, the tenant starts going, oh, OK, maybe you need Exchange product. Maybe you need SharePoint. So it actually takes a while for this group to be ready. <laughs> if you call the I, team. I, I, John, John. John. Yeah. Yeah. What's <laughs> happening? <laughs> Oh, that's all right. While you turn that back, it's still waiting. So you got 20 seconds. Oh, good. We didn't miss anything. Great. <laughs> no, it's still waiting. I'm just thinking of some funny thing to say. Well, well, it's. I guess it's kind of. Um, it's kind of cool. Let me know when you can see again, because you got five seconds. <laughs> that's all right. We're all good. Are you good? Okay, so you can, you can see it's uh, 59 and then it's going to tick over and then it's going to run. Okay, so basically you, I added an artificial one minute because I wanted to make sure the Office 365 groups is available before I turn it into a team. And then I'm going to query Office 365 and say, give me the general channel of this team, which gives me this ID. You know, teams ID have this thread of Skype in it. It's insane. All the channels have this guy. This this part of the ID. Uh, and then finally, we're gonna send a message. And the message we're sending is actually uh, what do we send? Let me just show you what we send. We send the HTTP. We basically say hello to your new team, John. And then I'm using I'm using this rather than the send message action. Send message action cannot do add mention. Whereas if I use a has she request I can. So you could say, okay, and then the zero ad is actually the user John Liu and he's got his ID and I do a get get user and then to resolve that ID and then I call that. Now if I pop over here and then I go to my teams. I love this world with Microsoft Flow. It's like all the Microsoft Office products just work together. You just swing between one product to another, everything just kind of happens. Right, where is Adelaide? Adelaide IT Pro is created. And if you go to Teams, you say, see this? Hello, your new team, John Liu, and tag me correctly. You were mentioned, okay? It's kind of me talking to myself. It's kind of weird. But anyway, uh, you know, there's new stuff right now. You could say important. So, of course, all the messages are important. And it also can be urgent now. So yes, of course, we need to add it to be urgent as well. Um, so that's basically, that's a flow that creates not only the team, but also find the channel, spam it, add everyone, and uh, just make sure you're loud and heard. Um, that's that one. And this, these two groups, these three set, these three set of um, flows, what's a good one? How do I describe this? Let me just show you this one. These three sets of flows, they, 
the, uh, example five is this idea that you can use flow to build any sort of governance system because what you basically have is imagine you do a scheduled job where you read a certain resource and in my case i'm reading microsoft office groups right so um and in this more advanced example i'm, I'm actually listening to the webhook so every time a microsoft group is created and we do one seconds ago because we created that teams group um then it calls my endpoint and say hey someone made a new group <coughs> so this one actually says someone someone made it the group i don't know whether it's easy to see yeah we can see yeah so it's uh I'm where is this <laughs> Yeah, so um, there are various ways we could build this. So, you know, in Office 365, we think, oh, how do we deal with governance problems? Uh, we don't even know who's creating teams, uh, or we don't know who's creating this or that. Um, we can use Flow to quite easily read these resources and push them into something like a SQL server table or push it into a SharePoint list. And then maybe use Power BI to just build a dashboard very quickly, overlaying that that information. And then you can see, okay, people are making these new things, or you know, this this is um, these, these things are not being managed. Like there's all, all these old teams that have been hanging around, and no one's come around to switch them off. So Flow is quite good at building this kind of systems very quickly. And it's both because you can run Flow on a scheduled job. But you can also run flow on a webhook. So you can actually say trigger when when an event or when an object is being created. And that's what this does. So I have a few examples. This one catches new groups. So that one listens to the webhook. The Office 365 groups webhook is three days. So every three days you need to wake up and go and resubscribe. I, I don't know why it's three days. It just seems really um, unnecessary because it just means I, I hit them more often and say, oh no, put the hook back on. I'm still listening. Uh, so that one's been running for as long as I can remember it. It runs every three days for the last two years now. Um, and that one is the one that this course. So whenever whenever a group is created in my tenant, the um, this of the Microsoft Graph will call this flow. And it tells me there's a there's a group being made. Um, there's another one, the, the governator. This one is a crazy pattern. Uh, but basically, we can use flow to reflow. So we use flow to read the environments that flows are in. And then for each environment, we get the, uh, the, the environment, the flows, the power apps, the connectors. And you can use it as kind of a, a primitive uh, um, uh, power platform. Let me see if I have an example. Yeah, I created a sample SharePoint site. So if I go here to flows, and then so this is all the flows being made by everybody in my company, in my org, which is really just me and um, fictional characters from Lord of the Rings. Um, but let me group by creator. So you can see this flow testers got one, Gandalf's got 10, I've got 448, and support has got one. Okay, so a very basic version of flow governance uh, using flow. Um, so that's the govern everything kind of idea. Any any questions so far? Um, so we kind of covered that one. We covered that. We did not cover this. This is kind of an integration book copy scenario. We covered this and we covered this. Okay, any questions? I have one more demo. That's a cool one. I want to, I've been waiting for it. But uh, let me take questions or anything. Uh, no, no Anyone? questions. Everyone's just no. amazed at what they're seeing. Demo six. Yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. Yeah, demo six. Demo six. All right. Demo six is um, needs a bit of setup. Hold on. So first, what we need is we need Minecraft, and then we're gonna <laughs> need um, code connection, and then we're also gonna need I think your data gate. Here we go. Oh, what's it doing? No, don't install anything. Did I 
the kid getting stolen? Did that just... Wait, hold on. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's this one, but I'm not sure why it's installing. Well, let's hope it works. Because it would be really silly if it suddenly stops working. All right, let's go. Now, don't need to sing this. You could probably hear it. Click, click, click. Do people actually read this, they say? Of course. So this is the uh, retail version of Minecraft. It's not a modded Java version that has some fancy crazy thing. This is the pure retail version. Now I am slightly worried about this gateway. It should not take this long. While we do that, let's come here and set this up. And then I'll explain what this is doing. Yeah, this should not take this long. I'm a bit worried. Let me see if... Um, the gateway is not running on my computer. Thanks. Hold on. I actually think this might be an old version that was hanging around, so I just wanted to make sure. <sighs> Quick. This was working this morning, so I'm gonna say yes, it's still working. Um, but while it's setting up, let me explain. So Minecraft, uh, you know, it's a game that everybody loves, uh, particularly me. Uh, oh crap, no, no, go. Um, and then the code connection. Code connection is actually something from the Minecraft education team. So what this does is it gives Minecraft a, um, ah, damn it. Uh, can't you just restart the on-premises gateway server service, not Windows or services, probably it's not there. Yeah, just restart the service. Yeah, I'm thinking about yeah. that. Let me let me just double check this again. Cause this I I did install refresh this this morning. I just wanted to make sure. But yeah, maybe I'll do that. Why is this checking anyway? Um yeah, so the code connection is something that gives um Gives Minecraft a REST endpoint and what's this called? This code on premises start okay. That one. So if I just start this, it should work. <sighs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> um so red this gives Minecraft a REST endpoint. And then the on-premises start gateway, this is something shared by Flow, Power Apps, and Power BI um, for these cloud products that are running Azure to talk to. So that's running. Let me retry. Hopefully, you find it. Um, for these products in Azure to see and talk to Flow that's running on the desktop. Yay. Thank you. Thank you for that tip. That's another good tip. That's a second bag. I've only got one bag, John. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> Why do you only have one no, bag? I need bag two bags. All right, okay. So that's running. Uh, I might have a shirt. Let me just double check. I don't think I need to sign in, but I'm just going to do it anyway, just in case. Currently, I'm asking myself, why did I quit all this like an hour ago? <laughs> right. Let's hope that's worked, and I should get ticks. Yes, power apps and flow. I ticked. 
And then we're going to pop back here and click on this demo. This is one where you really need a service hub with uh, all those extra screen to, to do your demo. So uh, here we have, we have, um, we have the Minecraft. Let's go. So what this flow is going to do is when I trigger it, each of these actions calls a custom web API through the gateway into my laptop, reroute through code connection into Minecraft, and it's going to make that robot do stuff. Uh, let's hope that works. <gasps> oh. It says completed, but I don't see it do anything. And uh, that's the end of that demo. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Why, why would it say complete when it's not done anything? Mm. Now I'm confused. Oh, well. That's the second time this demo failed. In my, in my, uh, yeah, in my demo last week, it also failed, but that one was a different one. This morning, it did succeed. That's why I thought like, oh, it's all working again. So I don't really get this. Why would it say okay when it's not okay? Oh, no web socket connection. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, I lost it. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. What am I doing? Sorry, fighting with my thing. Sorry, let's do one more time. Uh, I actually fell down and hit some sort of chicken. Um, no, 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 hold on. Let me put this. So that's supposed to be connected. Yeah, I'm not sure, but that still didn't light up. Wait, hold on. One nine two. Yeah, here we go. Let's just cheat with that one. Let's try that again. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Oh, there we go. He's waving. Look, look, look. Cake. Cake. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that web socket basically means this code connection and Minecraft did not, wasn't chatting. Because once it's connected, it says this. And then if you're using code connection with Minecraft, this is all the education programs, right? If you're using Scratch or Make Code. To, to basically program your Minecraft, that's how it works. But I borrowed that to basically say uh, we can use flow through the common data gateway, uh, so to the uh, data gateway to call this REST endpoint to control Minecraft. So um, a very over the top demo, if you have existing web services that are on premises, uh, that you still want to have, to have it automated from the cloud, uh, this is uh, this is kind of for that exact scenario. So if you have an on-prem uh, SharePoint or even custom web service, this can do it. Now let me wrap up this talk. Uh, let me wrap up this talk. There is one extra slide. Oh, no, no time for that. Uh, there is one extra slide I wanted to talk about, which is um, so. Earlier, I asked how many of you use PowerShell. So PowerShell is a good way to automate things. And uh, I kind of wanted to just list them side by side. In PowerShell, we use scripting. In Flow, we do have to learn expressions. In PowerShell, you will use PowerShell Gallery to uh, kind of download a lot of libraries to help you. In Flow, there's both the connectors as well as some, there are some templates like recipes. Um, PowerShell could be run on premises and in the cloud. In the flow side, we probably look at the data gateway as kind of a nearby comparison. Uh, two more parts here. Flow has an, a connectors framework. So this helps you manage all the OAuth tokens. So all those 270 connectors, 
flow remembers the OAuth, so it's able to reconnect on your behalf and do things. Whereas a lot of PowerShell requires you to either put the password in somewhere like a Windows credential, or maybe uh, when you run the PowerShell, it erases the dialog and asks you to log in on the spot. So it makes it hard to automate that piece. So that's that. And finally, our uh, flow can run as webhooks because there is always a server available to catch an event and then handle that. Whereas with PowerShell, difficult to do webhook kind of interaction because your, your PowerShell basically have to go into a waiting state and wait for some sort of external response. So more difficult to do the webhook in this space. Um, but totally they can be used together. PowerShell can be run in Azure Function and Azure Automation. Um, Azure Function, think of it as it, it's kind of more, it's cheaper as a coldest serverless compute. Uh, so if your PowerShell doesn't have crazy dependencies, you could just put that in Azure Function. If your PowerShell needs a lot of existing PS gallery components, it may be easier to put that into Azure Automation. And then from Flow, you could just call those two products to run your PowerShell. Uh, so yeah, in Azure Automation, we have hybrid run books. And then Flow Data Gateway. Now, Serge Luca, he's uh, Dr. Flow. He wrote this super, in, super crazy pattern. I don't recommend it. But I think you should do it once. I just don't recommend it. What he basically did was he says, here's a folder, and I run this script to tell Windows to execute whatever PowerShell that I put into this folder. So that's the one part, he gets that set up. So it's like an auto-execute folder. And then using the uh, data gateway, he remotely writes a PowerShell script from the cloud and kind of copy it into that folder, you get me? So using Flow, I, I told him, I said, that's such an elaborate way to kind of remotely turn off your kids PC, you just kind of go, no, nope, time to sleep, <laughs> and just download this PowerShell script that says shut down, and then the PC just dies, and I thought that's that's so draconian as a, as a, as a father that, that you do that. So, but you should totally play with that once, and then thought, this is so insane, I'm never going to do it again. But it's kind of cool, you should, do, you should definitely do that once. Um, quick learning, so if you have not started with Flow, Microsoft Learns, which is docs, Microsoft.com Flow is a good start. Lots of different scenarios depending on where you are, admin, power user, developer, so on. Um, if you're ready to look at expressions, read through this one big long list of about 100 functions. And then you don't have to memorize it, but you get a good understanding of what's, what's in there uh, around the binary functions, around the date functions. Um, then really going forward really is about if you know the thing that you want and what it's called, like John says, asynchronous webhook. So you go and search for that. You will find forums and YouTube channels that will talk about it. But sometimes what you want to do, you don't know what it's called, like this thing. Then um, reach out maybe on the forums or on Twitter um, and try to describe the best you can what you're trying to do. Because then people can latch on and say, oh, okay, for that problem, you need to look for this solution. And here are some blog posts or YouTube videos that may describe it. So if you can, uh, take a picture of what you're building or where you're stuck. Uh, blurt out the paths that are kind of confidential. But use that and you generally you'll get a lot quicker response. If you kind of use text and describe your problem, it's super fake. Uh, everyone reads it and go, oh, I, I just too hard to answer. So then it's hard to get answers for that kind of question. Uh, wrapping up, so some of the resources you should read my blog. This is supposed to be a developer blog, but the last two years is all about Flow. Uh, and you should totally try uh, flowstudio.app uh, if you have many, many flows. Or even if you just have a couple of flows, flowstudio.app will help you. Uh, have a look at some of the features around migration. That's very uh, one of the key features in Flow Studio. Um, are you seeing that one already? And that's that's the end of all the slides and the demos, including a successful Minecraft demo. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take that home with me. So there's a cake. <laughs> oh, no, it's gone. No, <laughs> uh, yeah, any questions or I, I could, or you want to any wrap questions? up? Yep. Uh, given yeah. the... Given that the flow can pause and wait for user input, 
and yeah. we no longer have an e-form such as InfoPath, what would you use in its place? Uh, if you're doing the form filling scenario, I still think Power Apps is the best replacement for InfoPath. If you're after um, kind of uh, just uh, just a cheap way of having external accounts entering forms, then you can use Microsoft Form, which is more a survey tool. So Microsoft Form lets you build out a very simple, uh, you know, series of questions. And when they submit, there is a Microsoft Forms flow connector that can pick up that and then shift it into database or SharePoint or whatever you want. Um, okay. So I quite like Microsoft Form for that. Now, Microsoft Form, you can't do the scenario where you partially fill out half the form and then ask the user to complete it. Like each new, each submission is a brand new one. There's no partial submissions or, or you know, page one, page two of the wizard. So that's form. Um, using things like Teams, you could you could turn it into a, rather than a user proactively sends data into your system, you can use Teams to go and ask for data. You could say, hey, you haven't filled in your manager, so you just spam your, spam your colleague until they gave up and say, look, my manager is John, okay? It's gone down. Just, just leave me alone. And then then you start spamming them. Then you ask them for their mobile number next week. You just kind of go, okay, now that we've got that sorted, let's do mobile. Um, so there's a different way of thinking. If you you know, if you got most of the information and you're just missing one or two, it may be you flip that data collection differently. You say, let's use Teams to go and fetch that information uh, and, and bring that back. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions? Okay. Sorry, right, we'll put uh, up the, um, the uh, links, John, from the end of it okay. uh, on the meetup so people can get to it. Yeah. If people want to get started or cool. go through some of that material you linked. Uh, use Teams uh, to ask questions. Interrogate. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Thank you. Cool. Thank you so much cool. for this opportunity. Let me know if you cool. have cool Thanks. questions or flow governance problems or, you know, wherever you are with the flow journey. Uh, glad to hear successes or, or you know, or, or yeah, I'd like to hear your story with, with flow. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks very much, Sean. Give you a clap for that. Right. Thank you for joining us at the IT Pro community. I want to give a big shout out to our sponsors, Microsoft and Sorison, your System Center experts. If you want to see more, subscribe to our channel and click the bell to get notified when we put up new content. And feel free to leave your suggestions for future events in the comments below. For more details on upcoming events or to join us live at our next meeting, join our meetup community at the link provided.